Hi there, Michael Burnett, AF7KB here with more on Extra Class Ham Radio Math. This is Exponents, Logarithms, and Keeping Those Millies, Nanos, and Picos Straight. Exponents are those little numbers, the superscripts, that sometimes appear above and just to the right of some value, whether that value is a number or a letter. An exponent says, raise this number to the power indicated by the superscript. The number being raised is called the base. So two, with a little two next to it, is two raised to the second power, also known as two squared, or two times two. Two with a little three by it is two raised to the third power, or two cubed, or two times two times two. Exponents don't have to be positive numbers. They can be negative numbers as well. Just as positive exponents make numbers get bigger, negative exponents make numbers get smaller. They don't make the base into a negative number, though. Any number, negative or positive, multiplied by itself results in a positive number and exponents are just shorthand for multiply this number by itself x number of times. Precisely speaking, negative exponents turn the base into the reciprocal of what would have been the positive exponent value. Reciprocal just means divide the value into 1. So, 2 to the negative sixth is the same as 1 over 2 to the 6th, and 2 to the 6th equals 1 over 2 to the negative 6th. Exponents can even be fractions. We often use those when we're working with decibels, for instance. Here's a calculation that shows the gain produced by a 3 dB increase in signal strength. The formula is gain equals 10 raised to the power of the number of dB over 10. In this case, that equals 10 raised to the power of 3 over 10, or 3 tenths, and that comes out to 1.995 times gain. Now, all that is a mathematical way of saying something that you probably familiar with, and that is that a 3 dB increase in signal strength requires approximately a doubling of power. Exponents are really handy for putting a lot of number into a little bit of space. For instance, we can write 2 raised to the 64th power, or we can write out, well, whatever this gigantic number is. Now, for us, an especially handy set of exponents is powers of 10. They're so useful to scientists, like you and me, they're often referred to as scientific notation. The specific values that we use the most are actually what's known as engineering notation. Engineering notation is just scientific notation that only uses exponents that can be divided by 3. Now, here's why that's important. For our purposes, the most useful exponents are the negative exponents, such as 10 to the negative third, 10 to the negative sixth, 10 to the negative ninth, and 10 to the negative twelfth. 10 to the negative third, negative sixth, negative ninth, and negative twelfth correspond to the values of milli, micro, nano, and Pico. When we multiply a number by a negative exponent, like 10 to the negative sixth, it's the same as dividing that number by the positive exponent. So, 50 times 10 to the negative sixth is the same thing as 50 divided by 10 to the sixth, or 50 divided by one million. And by the way, I know my handwriting is awful, but there's some research to indicate that watching this stuff get written helps your brain process it. So I'm sorry for hurting your eyes, but I hope I'm helping your brain. Notice that 10 to the negative third, 
10 to the negative 6th, 10 to the negative 9th, and 10 to the negative 12th can all be divided by 3. In other words, the exponents can be divided by 3. The only oddball in the whole chart of electronic values is deci, which is 10 to the negative first, and we only use that for decibels. When we work electronic formulas, it's generally useful to convert all the values to standard units. In other words, we convert picofarads, microvolts, kiloohms, megahertz, and milliamps to farads volts, ohms, hertz, and amps. That way, our answer will come out in a standard value. That's when engineering notation comes in very handy. Those tiny values can accumulate an awful lot of zeros ahead of the value when we're trying to convert them to other values. It's hard to accurately count how many zeros we've punched into the calculator. And well, let's be honest, if you're me, it's hard to even remember how many zeros are supposed to get punched in, much less to punch accurately. It's easy, though, to enter a value like 23 microfarads as 23 times 10 to the negative sixth to convert microfarads to farads. And calculators never lose track of the zeros. That's why we'll use exponents throughout this whole series, because they keep us from making button-pushing errors. Now, here's a table of the most commonly used electronic values. And notice those powers of 10 in the right-hand column. They're very handy to remember for the exam, not to mention for the rest of your ham radio career. Now, we have a few traditional mnemonics in electronics, such as big boys race our young girls, but violet generally wins, for the first letters of the black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white colors of the resistor code. But I couldn't find any traditional ones for the values. No problem. We'll invent one. This is Paul. Paul is a happy ham, because Paul has 12 new microphones. Paul's 12 new microphones covers the small values we use most on the exam. Pico, 10 to the negative 12th, Nano, 10 to the negative 9th, and Micro, 10 to the negative 6th. If you want the whole table, you could use Paul's 12 new microphones made Desi kill old mad George for the values going up from Pico to Giga or Jiga, depending on your persuasion. Made for Millie, Desi for Desi, of course, and kill old, should be obvious if unfortunately a little violent, Kilo, poor old mad George. There are fancier calculations that one can do with powers in general, and particularly powers of 10, but we don't need those for the extra exam. The conversions are the most useful for us. To convert, for instance, 35 picofarads to farads, we multiply the picofarads by 10 to the negative 12th. Now, that's simple enough, especially if you use the times 10 to the nth power key, which saves you a few keystrokes. So, 35 picofarads equals 35 times 10 to the negative 12th farads. We punch it into the TI-30XS, 3, 5, and then the times 10 to the nth power key, then the negative key, don't use the subtract key, use that negative key, and then 1, 2. Boom! We push enter, and there it is converted to a different form of notation because the calculator wouldn't be able to handle all of the zeros that we have to put in front of that 35 in order to make it a farad value instead of a picofarad value. Now, I said the times 10 to the nth power key saves you some keystrokes. Here's how you'd enter that if you did it kind of the traditional way. 
you'd go three, five times 10, one, zero, and then you use this little up arrow key. And that's the caret key or the raise to a power key. So we push that, and then we enter our negative 12, push the button, we get the same answer. But we saved four keystrokes, and that's four possible errors. Now, let's talk about logarithms. We have a couple of calculations to do for the exam that use logarithms. Logarithms are sort of the complement to exponents. Of course, that cumbersome name is often shortened to log, as in, hey, what's the log of 249? A logarithm is simply the answer to the question, to what power should I raise the number 10 so that it equals this number for which I want the logarithm? 10 to the second power is 100. So the logarithm of 100 is 2. You can prove it yourself. Grab that TI-30XS and press log 1, 0, 0, and then close that parentheses. You notice it puts in the first parentheses for you automatically, and press enter. What do you know? The answer is 2. Logarithms aren't limited to integers. Try this one. Log 2, 0, 0, in the parentheses, and enter. 2.30102.9996? Yep. So, 10 raised to the power of 2.30102.9996 equals 200. Now, if you were paying attention, you noticed I used a little shortcut there. I used the second and answer function rather than entering that whole long drawn out logarithm in the calculator. In that example, 2.30, etc., is a base 10 log. Logarithms are usually base 10, also often known as log 10. But not always. The most common variations are base 2 logarithms and logarithms of a particular irrational number called E for Euler's number, which is approximately equal to 2.718. Logarithms with a base of E are called natural logarithms, and they're really interesting. They show up in all kinds of sciences, from physics to geology to biology and more. For the exam, we won't be using anything but base 10 logarithms, and what we do with them is as simple as what you just did testing your calculator. Base 2 logs, log 2, and natural logs, log n, or more often ln, make brief appearances in the background, but you won't need to actually use them. Really, all you need to know about logarithms for the exam is how and when to push the log key on your calculator, enter a number, press that close parentheses, and enter, and you're done. While we're on the topic of strange numbers and letters that appear above and below values, there are also subscripts, which we use a lot as labels to identify values in formulas. For instance, rather than just writing F for frequency, we might have several frequencies in a problem. So we might call one F1, another F2, and maybe we'd even have an F desired for the frequency we want to listen to. So that's subscripts. Okay, subscribe to the channel. This video collection will grow. Maybe go like our Facebook page and visit the FastTrackHam.com site. Thanks, and 7-3.